Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use integration by parts three times in order to find the antiderivative of a function. To complete this problem, we'll understand our integration by parts formula and then use it three times in a row to simplify and evaluate the integral. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to evaluate the integral of x cubed times e to the x dx. The first thing that we should recognize is that we have essentially two functions inside of our integral here. We have x cubed and we have e to the x, and they are multiplied together. So the first thing that we should think is to try to use integration by parts to evaluate this integral. Whenever you have two functions like this and they're multiplied together, integration by parts should be your first thought. So I've gone ahead and written the integration by parts formula over here on the right. And what it tells us is that when we have a uh, when we have an integral when we are, when we're asked to take the integral of two pieces that are multiplied together u and dv when we want to take the integral of something in that form the formula we'll use to do it is u times v minus the integral of v times du so essentially what we need to do is we need to identify which part of our integral is u and which part is dv and then once we've identified u and dv, we'll take the derivative of u to find du and the integral of dv to find v. And then we have u, du, v, and dv, and those four components we can use to plug into our formula and build out the right-hand side over here. So let's go ahead first and identify u and dv. U is the um, part you want to focus in on first. So to find u, you should be looking for something that becomes simpler when you take its derivative. So in this case, we have x to the third and e to the x, which are two candidates. If we take the derivative of e to the x, we're going to get e to the x, the exact same thing. And we really haven't made any progress, which should immediately rule it out as a candidate for u. That means that u will be equal to x to the third, the other option. So we set u equal to x cubed. That means that the rest of what's inside the integral here has to be set equal to dv because we have two components here. We have u and we have dv. So because we already set u equal to x cubed, that means that dv has to be equal to everything else, including dx. So we'll set dv equal to e to the x dx. Now, as I mentioned before, now that we've identified these two pieces, we need to go ahead and take the derivative of u to get du. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and it's important then that we add a dx to this since we took the derivative. We're going to take the integral of dv to find v, and the integral of e to the x is simply e to the x, the same thing. So here with u, you're going in this direction, taking the derivative. With dv, you're going in this direction and taking the integral. Now that we have those four components, we can go ahead and plug them into our integration by parts formula. So you'll notice that we have first u times v. So we're going to be multiplying u and v together. So we'll go ahead and say that our integral x cubed e to the x dx, our original integral, is equal to this right-hand side here. So u times v, we know to be x cubed times e to the x, minus the integral of v times du. So we'll say the integral of v times du. v times du will give us 3x squared e to the x dx, and now you can see we still have an integral that's too complicated to integrate on its own, but it is different than what we originally started with. Instead of having x cubed here, we've got 3x squared. So notice that the degree of that term went down by 1, right? We had a, a third degree power function here, and now we have a second degree power function. So what we're going to have to do is use integration by parts again to try to attempt to reduce our integral to something simpler. So we'll again say this time that u is equal to 3x squared. We'll say that dv is equal to everything that's left over, which will be e to the x 
dx. We'll take the derivative of u to get du, and that'll give us 6x times dx, right? We just used power rule to find the derivative of 3x squared, so 6x dx. Then we'll take the integral of dv. The integral of e to the x is simply e to the x. And now we'll plug these four components into our formula again for this integral. So what we're left with here is this x cubed e to the x carries down, so x cubed e to the x minus, and now this integration by parts operation we're gonna perform represents this integral right here. So what we'll do is we carry down our minus sign here, we're gonna draw a big parentheses and plug these four components into the right hand side of our integration by parts formula and put that in parentheses here. So u times v will be 3x squared e to the x minus the integral of v times du, which will give us 6x e to the x dx, right? We have the 6x here, the e to the x here, and the dx here. I just reordered the terms like that. So that's our entire integration by parts formula, this right-hand side over here that replaced this integral right here. So when we simplify this, we'll get x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x. The negative sign here and here will cancel out and we'll get a positive. Now we can go ahead and pull this 6 here out in front of our integral because it's a constant coefficient. So we can say plus 6 times the integral of x e to the x dx. It's not really crucial that we pull that 6 out in front, but we can do it just to simplify our integral a little bit. So now notice that we still have a function that is too complicated for us to integrate as is. We'll in fact need to use integration by parts a third time. But the trend that we should take note of is that we started out with a third degree power function here. We used integration by parts and we reduced it to a second degree power function. And now essentially we have x to the first power, which is of course a first degree power function. So we've gone from three to two to one. So if the trend holds and we use integration by parts again, this term here should drop out and we should be left with something that we can integrate. So if we use integration by parts again and we say that u is equal to x and that dv is equal to e to the x dx, then we take the derivative of u, the derivative of x is just 1, so we would get 1 times dx, which of course will just be dx, and then we integrate dv to find v, so we get v equals e to the x. Now we'll plug those four components into our integration by parts formula to replace the integral that we had left over here. So what we get for our integral function, we'll carry over this x cubed e to the x, this whole thing here we'll bring up. So x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6. And now here's where we draw our big parentheses. And in place of this entire integral right here, we'll replace that with our the right hand side here of our integration by parts formula plugging in these components that we have. So remember u times v, so u times v will give us x e to the x minus the integral of v times du. So v times du here will just give us e to the x dx and notice now that our x term dropped away and we're just left with e to the x inside our integral. So it looks like we're finally going to be able to integrate after using integration by parts for the third time. So we'll go ahead and simplify and we'll get x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x. Notice now we have to distribute this 6. So we'll get minus 6 times the integral of e to the x dx. We know that the integral of e to the x is simply e to the x, so we'll go ahead and take the integral and we'll get 6x e to the x minus 6 times e to the x. At this point, because we've finished our final integral, we want to make sure to add the constant of integration 
plus C to account for that, that constant that could have dropped off. So we have the constant of integration there. And now we could leave this as our final answer, but why don't we go ahead and factor out an e to the x because we have an e to the x in each one of our terms here and we'll simplify if we factor out the e to the x. So our final answer for the integral will be e to the x times x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 6 plus c. And that's it. That's our final answer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.